Giving hope, giving light, bringing peace to our world. And this is the real moment. Hello, friends. It's me, Nikkei Adeyemi. Here again on Real Woman with Nikki Adeyemi. And I'm so excited to be with you again. So glad to come into your homes, your living room, your offices, wherever you are at this point in time. Thank you so much for being part of this show. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you. I'd like to read um, some feedback from some of our viewers who have taken time to write me. Um, I get emails every day and... It encourages me, you know, a lot. <laughs> well, this one says, Good evening, Nikki Adeyemi. I just finished enjoying your lesson-filled television program. And I wish to let you know that I'm richly blessed. Thank you, and please remain a blessing. I sure will. <laughs> and then this one says, Hello. Just thought I should recognize the production crew. The show is looking good. And this is from Michelle, I think in the, from the UK. Wow, I'm so proud of my production crew. I am so proud. You need to see what goes on behind the scenes. <laughs> They're gifted, they help me a lot, and we do this together. Oh, um, let me take one more, just one more. This person says, what a way to start my day. Women are rising powerfully for God. You are a strong beacon of light to this generation. God bless you, ma. This is from Waina A. And I guess this is from South Africa. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you for your support, for your prayers. We are so encouraged right here in the studio. Today, I'm going to be talking about you have a bright future. I'm going to be addressing worry. I'm going to be, by the grace of God, you know, assuring, bringing assurance, bringing um, validation and a lot of encouragement. So you don't want to go away. Call your friends, send them a message, tell them, tell them to tune into this station right now. And I'll be right back after this break. Hello, friends. Welcome back. I'm here to talk about the bright future that you have to encourage someone. Hey, I know there are a lot of people out there. You're overwhelmed. You're concerned. You're worried. And I've been there. And honestly, sometimes in and out, you feel overwhelmed. There's a lot on your plate. You worry about how you're going to be able to do all that you have to do. You're juggling so many responsibilities at the same time. You worry if you measure up to your boss, you know, to the person you're working for, to your family, to your children, if you have children. You sometimes worry about the things you want to do in future. You worry. You, you, you look at your age. You feel, okay, I want to do so much. And look at where, where I am right now. I want to tell you, calm down. Do not worry. Don't take thought. You know, the Bible says, for what you will eat, what you will drink, your heavenly Father knows these thing, things. And I am not encouraging laziness or a lack of ambition. But what I am trying to say is, have an understanding that you have a bright future. Proverbs chapter 4, 18, it says, the path of a just is like a shining light, shining brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. You can't achieve everything in a day. You are being too hard on yourself. You're being too hard on yourself. Yes, you have goals. Yes, you have dreams. But it's going to be step by step, line upon line. Yes, it will look sometimes like there's nothing happening. Sometimes it looks like stagnation. But I want you to know that oftentimes you're not stagnated. You just have to ensure that you're growing inside. You're reading God's word. You're, you, ensure, you ensure that you are reading books, you are exposing yourself to mentors, to books, to information that will help you to think differently. 
that would help you to grow on the inside. On the outside, nothing much might be happening. It might look like the same old, same old routine. Someone out there is saying, for how long will I do this? Maybe you're tired of your job. Maybe you feel you have too much you're doing. If you have too much you're doing at the same time, stop. Take a deep breath. Itemize. Write out everything that you do. Write out everything that you are and begin to prioritize them. Begin to put them in order. I remember I used to do this a lot. I still do, but I do it less often now because... I'm narrowing down in my niche and the things that I do. But I remember many years ago, I used to be worried. What am I? God, what have you called me to do? What, you know, and I would start listing things. I would say, well, first of all, I'm a child of God. <laughs> I'm a Christian. I'm someone's daughter because I still have both parents. Ah, I'm a wife. I'm a mother. Um, you know, uh, um, I speak. And teach, you know, in what order should I put these things? And you know what? The order this year may not be the order next year. The order this year may not be the order in five years' time. So don't be overwhelmed. Don't be too hard on yourself. I've mentioned on this broadcast before that we should get over perfectionism. I don't know whether it's the world, whether it's something about us women or men as well, that we feel that we have to be perfect. Our bodies have to be in perfect shape. Everybody wants to be size two. Just make sure that you're in good health. I think the important thing is consistency. The important thing is to list out all the things you want to do, all the things you can do now. If you have very small kids now, you may not be able to do everything, but you can do some things. You can still be a working mother, a working father. So pace yourself. That is the... The, the, the thrust. Pace yourself. Have an understanding that your future is bright. Don't think that if you don't attack everything all at once, then your future is bleak. No. You have a bright future. God has you. He knows the plans he has for you. In fact, there's a scripture I love so much. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. You might know it already. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Towards you. Yes, you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. So if you do not have peace right now, then that's not from God. God's thoughts towards you are of peace. And he said he's giving you a future and a hope. Your future is bright. Calm down. You are going to make it. Hello? You're going to make it. Pace yourself. Write down all the things you want to do. Apportion time to it. Things you should do five years from now. Things you should do ten years from now. Okay? Don't try to achieve everything this year or next year. If not, you will burn out. Again, who are you in competition with? Oftentimes we're in competition with our peers, with our age mates. Many times you're saying, huh, look at this person. We went into school together. You know, look at where he is now. Look at where she is now. Mm -mm. You come, if you're going to compete at all, compete with yourself. Be a better version of yourself. Be a better you than you were last year. And when I say better you, better in your thoughts better in your growth, better in the habits that you have broken. Many times people don't know that, hey, you can give testimony over the habits. You realize last year you had a habit you were struggling with. You've worked on yourself. And right now, that habit is nowhere to be found. That is awesome. That is an awesome testimony. That's internal healing. It may not be obvious on the outside. So when you think about things like that, you would learn to have joy. Celebrate small successes. Don't always wait for the big break. You know, many times are waiting for the big break. Some people have learned to celebrate the fact that they woke up in the morning. Yes. I'm telling you, if you've ever lost your health before, you will learn to celebrate the fact that you woke up, you're alive, all the parts of your body are working because there are people 
who at some point in time or the other probably had a stroke, paralyzed or whatever, or in coma for a while and they couldn't move their bodies. And when they got their health back, <laughs> they are forever grateful for the fact that, you know, wow, my fingers are working. My feet are working. Hey, so learn to celebrate small successes. Even if you have had disappointments, even if yesterday was overwhelming or today is so busy that you don't think that you even achieved anything meaningful because you are chasing so many things or you had so many assignments or you were late for that meeting, you know, and your child had something, you were called from your child's school you know, for some terrible behavior your child exhibited. Calm down, calm down. Don't die before your time. Don't burn out. Your future is bright. Your future is bright. God has thoughts of peace for you, thoughts of hope. Because I can say this with hindsight now. I know, being worried, being th thinking, oh, how am I going to do all this at the same time? Until I realize that, you know what? I'm not going to kill myself because if you kill yourself or your health fails, how then would you even be able to achieve any of those things that you have written down or that you want to achieve? Yes, you're an achiever. You're a go-getter. But pace yourself. Let God help you. The Bible says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Don't work in your power or in your might. Recently, someone gave me a word of encouragement and says, hey, your heart is crying out for, there's so many things in your heart, you know, still your heart is crying out to express some more things. Yes, I still have things in my heart that God, you know, that, that are crying out for expression, but I know it may not be for now. It may be for later. So for now, I'll focus on what I have to do. And that person encouraged me and said, God is saying, rest rest in him and i'm saying to you out there rest in god because it's not going to happen the way you think <laughs> it's going to happen but not the way that you think okay so go for it dream big but don't kill yourself if it's not happening now i want to speak also to those who are you know you're having a struggle probably in your marital life you're single and you're thinking okay when will this happen how does this relate to me? God said he has thoughts of peace to give me a future and a hope. First of all, I want you to know that marriage is not a passport to heaven. I always say it. Two, that is not to make light of it, but if it's a strong desire for you, it really is a strong desire. Talk to God about it. Tell him, don't worry about it and leave it. Leave it with him. Let him work it out. Do your bit. Flow. Be in the right place at the right time. Don't always be second-guessing yourself. Don't always be saying, hey, is it going to happen now? It's going to happen today. You go into a place, that's all you're thinking about, whether church, whether a meeting, whether... Just be yourself. Enjoy yourself. Have fun. Enjoy your own company. I always see that people want to be attracted, will be attracted to a happy person. I doubt if there's someone that will be attracted to someone that has a very long face, someone who's always complaining and someone who always looks so sad and forlorn. Hey, most chances are that you're not going to find someone attracted to you in that state. So cheer up, enjoy your company. And I think, um, well, before you know it, you're going to find yourself connected to this person. Someone is going to be drawn to you. Someone is going to want you in their life. And it's all going to start with friendship. That's how it starts. It usually starts with friendship. Usually a stranger won't just come and meet you and say, marry me. <laughs> so I've had questions like that before. Okay, someone who is near stranger, you know, just because we said hello once or twice and says, you're my wife. God showed me you're my wife. Tell the person, you know what, relax. Let's try and be friends first, okay? So because one thing, it's one step leading to another. It doesn't mean that you're not the spouse meant for that person, but some people are so intense, they don't wait. And that's what we're saying. Calm down, pace yourself, have your strategy. You like someone, you want to get close to the person, 
have your strategy. Don't just bump into the person's life and because you are convinced that person is for you. Be patient. God is giving you peace. He's the God of all peace. And the Bible says that his wisdom, wisdom that is from above, is peaceable. That's one of the things that you know that this wisdom or whatever um, you're receiving or whatever you have to do it would always bring peace if it's from above. Many times the enemy will push us, will make us in a hurry. Do it now, do it now, you know, and you don't have peace and you feel you've got to calm down and think, where is this coming from? Friends, I'm just telling you, your future is bright. It's a bright day ahead of you. I know there's so much going on out in the world there. Calamity, hurricane, storm, one storm after the other. But well, you must have inner peace. When you have that inner peace, then it can flow to your family. It can flow to other people. People are looking for that anchor. People are looking for that peaceful person. People are longing for that one who has some stability. Are you ready to be that stabilizing factor? in the life of your family and the people around you. Everybody's worried. People have thoughts racing through their minds. But I believe and I pray that the peace of God will be written all over you. The peace of God will guard your heart and keep your minds forever. Friends, I'd like us to take a break right now. There's still more for you. There's still more coming. There's still more coming because wisdom is flowing here. It's not too late to call a friend. Tell a friend. Tune into this station right now and join us. I'll be right back after this break. Hello, friends. Welcome back. I'm talking about your future is bright. What you believe is what you receive. As you think in your heart, so are you. And I'm trying to communicate that if you believe you have a bright future, then you have a bright future. Don't ever be in doubt of that. Don't look at the waves. Don't look at what is happening all around you. Believe in your heart that your future is bright. I want to share a story with you. Many years ago, um, about almost 20 years ago now, my husband felt, I mean, the church that he founded, um, I co-founded the church with him. I mean, we started it together. Um, under the leading of, and help of the Holy Spirit, um, in the first, or should I say, in the second year, he felt, okay, this church is not growing. I cannot live my life, you know, on this level. I am more than this. <laughs> That's what he said. That's what he thought. I am more than this. He felt the church, you know, plateaued at a very... Um, a number of, I don't know, maybe 200 or something like that, but he felt the church was not growing. He didn't have money, he didn't have income, you know, and, um, but yet he had invitations to speak um, in other churches, organizations, you know, would invite him. Of course, they, most of those organizations too didn't have much, <laughs> but the fulfillment of being invited to speak, you know, and all of that, but he felt the church was not growing. And he decided to shut down the church, to close down the church. Yes, if you feel you're doing things, you're, you're worried by doing too many things. You want to say, okay, what can I close down for now? What can I shut down? What can I put on the back burner? But this, is, this was not the issue. This was not the case. God did not ask him to shut down the church. <laughs> but he was overwhelmed and he felt this is not working and this might be getting in the way of my teaching gift i mean he wanted to basically be a, an itinerant teacher going from place to place teaching but at that time that was not the perfect will of god god wanted the church to thrive but the church didn't seem to be thriving so what did he do what did he do he said look we're going to close down this church and all of that so we decided to pray we decided to go off, you know, take time off, go on a retreat and pray. This verse, Jeremiah 29 verse 11, we read earlier on, but I'll read verse 12. Jeremiah 29, 11. Let me read that again. For I know the thoughts I think towards you, says the Lord. 
thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Another translation says to bring you to that expected end. What is the end that you expect? Because what you expect is what you will get. Verse 12 says, then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. So we went to pray and we listened to the Lord and the Lord encouraged him and we encouraged ourselves not to close the church, but to go back, focus on it, you know, with renewed faith, stay with it, whether it seemed to be growing or not, whether anything seems to be happening or not. And we stayed with it for years, a few more years, until we began to see some signs of growth. We began to see rays of hope. I don't know what it is you're waiting for on God right now. And you feel you've stagnated. Take a retreat. Take time out. It may be a few hours. It might be a few days. Calm your soul. The psalmist said, when my heart is overwhelmed, please lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And that rock is Jesus. Go to him. Be in his presence. Be still. He said, be still and know that I am God. Some of us run helter-skelter talking to people. And that's okay. You have mentors. You have, because sometimes God will speak to you through someone or through a book or through a TV program show just like what you're watching right now but you know what sometimes we don't even come down to read a book or read our bible or we're busy complaining to friends we're complaining to every and the people you're complaining to might not even be in a better situation <laughs> they might be in the same boat same shoes as you or even worse and not have much uh, to offer in terms of solution so jesus said come to me all of you who labor and are heavy laden. Come to me, all of you who are carrying a heavy load, the message translation says, and I will give you rest. Anybody needs rest out there? Enough of this heavy load, enough of this burden. Give it to him once and for all. In the place of prayer, in the place of listening, you will receive strategy. Even if you don't receive it right there and then, it could be a few days after, a thought will just come to you on what to do, and that thought will lead to other things. It will open up your destiny, open up a new chapter. Be still, okay? Not every um, growth, is not, movement is not always a sign of growth. Haven't you seen the rocking chair? You sit on it, it's moving. It's a rock, you're rocking back and forth, but it's not going anywhere. Hello, so calm down. It says, I will listen to you. You will seek me and you will find me. So whether you're overwhelmed with toddlers, young kids, and you feel they're going to be at this age forever, no, they won't. They're going to grow. <laughs> or whether you think you're in school, at the same time, you have to work, you have to do so many things, you have to juggle your responsibilities, calm down. Sometimes what you need is a good nap first. Wake up, be refreshed, and map out your course. So encourage people because in times like this, it's hard. It's harsh. So there, there have been hurricanes. There have been storms. Some people don't even know where to pick their lives up from. But there is hope, and the future is so bright because God is on the throne. And if you believe in him and hold on to his word, everything he said to you is going to come to pass. Everything is going to be okay. Be faithful where you are. To those who are employ employees and you feel, oh gosh, this job is routine. I am stuck here. You're not stuck. One day you're going to move on. But ask God for grace to be faithful. A faithful man abounds with blessings. To be faithful, to be diligent. God who sees in secret, he rewards openly. I've had so many testimonies of promotion, so many testimonies of elevation, of God's lifting. You know, I've heard from people who feel when it happened, they're like, when, what did I do? When did this, you know, and sometimes it just comes suddenly. They have forgotten that they have sown seeds, seeds over time when they thought no one was watching, but somebody was watching. Someone saw you. And if nobody saw you, God saw you. The angels saw you. So continue to do good. Continue to be 
that blessing that you are. Continue to add value. Don't get overwhelmed to the point where you are irritating everybody. You're a pain in the neck in the office. You're a pain in the neck at home. You are just, and then you wonder why is everybody, you know, moving away from me? How come I don't have a friend? How come people are not loyal to me? How come nobody wants to, you know, really, really spend time with me? Hey, be that person that adds value. Be that person that is not always overwhelmed. Be that person that has peace inside. Peace be still. Hook up with the Prince of Peace today and your life will be the better for it. Friends, I don't know where you are right now. There might be someone who's watching today that is not saved or you don't have a relationship with God or your relationship with God is really strained. Maybe you've taken offense. Maybe you're in anger. Maybe you are angry with God because he allowed your spouse to die or he allowed that partner or that child passed on untimely and you haven't gotten over it and you feel God why 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 maybe you lost your home maybe you couldn't cope with your mortgage and it had to be foreclosed and you're back to renting maybe you feel homeless and you're just squatting or just managing in a friend's house and they're not treating you too well maybe you don't have a child and it's beginning to get to you for all the years of marriage what is your why whatever your why is hold on to the fact that you have a bright future Hold on to the fact that he knows. Do not give up on your insight. He said he will give you a future and a hope. Do not lose hope. Do not despair. Hold on to hope. Hold on to his word. He is a faithful God. Hello, he is a faithful God. God bless you. I want to pray for someone out there who is going through trauma right now. I want to pray with that person that is not saved. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I've been a sinner, but today I return to you, Jesus. Come and be my Lord. Father, make me your child today. Forgive me of all my sins, for I know Jesus died for me. To pay. He paid the price for every sin and shame. Thank you for making me your own. Amen. I want to pray for that person that is overwhelmed and discouraged. I want to pray for that person that is on the verge of divorce or even separation. Your union is right before your eyes, seems to be broken and reduced to nothing. I pray for you. I pray for hope. I pray for strength in the name of Jesus. I pray for healing in the name of Jesus. I pray for God's grace upon you right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Touch that person. Touch that person watching right now. Touch that one. Heal their heart, oh God. Heal even their physical bodies in Jesus' name, Father. We call forth children that have, that have just strayed away from home, Father God. Children that have gone wayward, we'll call them forth right now with the love of God. Come back home in Jesus' name. Come back to your right senses. We pray this and many more. Thank you, Father, for every need represented, oh God. In every viewer that is watching right now, Prince of Peace, Father in heaven, give them the peace that passes all understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, God bless you. That's all I have for now. I want to trust God that you will keep shining, that you will be lifted, you will be elevated, and you will spread that peace and joy to others around you. Till I come your way again next time, stay blessed and bye for now.